the KMNN studios, this is the Kids Morning News Network. Good morning. It's June 12th, 2024, the 164th day of the year. I'm Alex in the KMNN studio in New York. There's a famous book called A Cricket in Times Square about an actual cricket who lives in New York City's Times Square subway station. Well, this week, there is a different kind of cricket in New York. Cricket, the sport. If you're listening to this in the United States, you have probably never seen cricket. You may have never even heard of it. But like soccer used to be, cricket is a sport that people are crazy about all over the world. Except here in the U.S. This week, for the first time, cricket World Cup matches have been taking place in the United States. Some of them in East Meadow, New York, just outside the New York City border. The match between India and Pakistan, two of the best teams in the world, drew a crowd of 34,000 people to a brand new stadium that they didn't even start building until this past February. Well, today is the last day of matches in New York. The USA will face India. In PS, India and the US both won against Pakistan this week. But the U.S. is definitely the underdog today. So for all you cricket noobs, and I include myself in that group, how is it played? Well, some parts of it are kind of like baseball. There are two teams, and they play with bats and balls on a field. But unlike baseball, the bats are flat. They're kind of like paddles. A lot of the action happens on a dirt strip in the middle of the field called the pitch. At each end of the pitch... Three sticks stand upright in a row with two smaller sticks laid crosswise on top of them. Two players from the team at bat stand at either end of the pitch in front of the sticks. The pitcher from the other team, called the bowler in cricket, whips the ball at the sticks trying to knock the cross pieces off. And the batter tries to knock the ball away out into the outfield. So when they hit the ball, the batters switch places as fast as they can, like a relay. And every time they switch places, they score a run. But they're out if their sticks get knocked off by the ball, and either the bowler or one of the outfielders can do that, or if the outfielders catch a fly ball. Now those aren't all the rules, but it's a start. Like any sport, it's a lot harder than it sounds, and there's a lot of skill and strategy involved. But now that you know more or less how it's played, you might see history in action if you catch some clips from today's match in New York. How did you sleep last night? Did you sleep a long time and wake up feeling energetic and clear-headed? Or did you not sleep that well and now you're groggy and trying to reboot your brain? Sleep is pretty amazing and we absolutely all of us 100 percent need it you literally can't live if you don't spend a good chunk of your life asleep but no one knows why really it's one of those mysteries of nature there are lots of ideas and theories of course one idea that's pretty new is that sleep is a time when our bodies remove toxins or bad chemicals from our brains And, you know, all the sort of garbage that our cells create while they're working. Scientists have even discovered a network of little channels, like drain pipes in the brain, where these waste products get flushed out. That makes sense, right? Well, now it turns out there's just one little problem. A new study in mice finds that their brains actually clear all that stuff out much faster when they're awake. And according to this study, being asleep actually slows down the brain cleaning. But of course, this is still up for debate. Now there are two groups of scientists who don't agree which one is correct. Does the brain cleaning work better when we're asleep? Or does it work better when we're awake? I say we all just sleep on it.
It's riddle time. Monday's riddle was what kind of lion never roars? A dandelion. Today's riddle is I'm not alive, but I grow bigger. I don't breathe, but I need air. What am I? I'm not alive, but I grow bigger. I don't breathe, but I need air. What am I? The answer on Friday. All right, well, now that we've explained cricket, let's go back to the national pastime, baseball. Have you ever played Little League? It was on this day in 1974 that Little League finally allowed everyone, boys and girls, to play. Before that, it actually had a rule against girls playing Little League. But in 1972... A girl in Hoboken, New Jersey, named Maria Pepe, joined her local team. She was a pitcher, and a good one, apparently. She was the starting pitcher for the first three games. But then, the National Little League organization found out and forced her to quit. Well, Maria was no quitter. She got a big organization to help her out, the National Organization of Women, and they took Little League to court and won. But Maria's case only applied to New Jersey. So in states across the country, girls filed lawsuits demanding the right to play. And instead of fighting them all, the organization announced in 1974 that girls would be welcome nationwide. And the U.S. Congress passed a law signed by President Gerald Ford making sure that change would stick. By then, Maria Pepe was too old to play Little League, but her cap from the 1972 season is now on display at the National Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. Warm weather is coming to most of the country today and serious heat in the southwest Lots of sun from coast to coast, except around the Great Lakes and Florida, where you could see some rain. That's the show. Thank you very much for listening. If you like this episode, please subscribe to the Kids Morning News Network. That's such a huge help to a little podcast like this. And grownups, if you'd like to become a supporter, there's a link in the episode description. I'll be back on Friday. I hope you are too. From the KMN Newsroom, this is Alex. And I haven't said this for a while, but that's the end of the news. Music.